And here in Africa, hundreds of people remain missing after five days, five days after an ISIS-linked armed group known as Al-Shabaab raided the town of Palma in Mozambique, northern Cabo Delgado province, killing and wounding an unknown number of civilians and causing thousands to flee. On Sunday evening, the government gave only a second update since the March the 24th attacks, but added few details. The Defense Ministry spokesman, who took no questions from reporters, said security forces were committed to clearing areas around Palma to ensure the local population's safe return. Dozens of civilians were killed when the armed group raided the town and fired on people and buildings. Seven more people were killed in an ambush on a convoy of vehicles as it attempted to leave the town. Meanwhile, the, form, the mother of a man killed by suspected insurgents in Mozambique has told has spoken of the moment he was shot and he tried to flee a hotel. Meryl Knox's 40-year-old son, Adrian Nell, was shot in a vehicle he was trying to escape in with his father and younger brother. And former commander, U.S. African Command, General William Ward, joins me from Washington, D.C., via Skype. Good to have you join us, General Ward. How does uh, a magnitude of this kind of attack happen in an area where government has said it is safe and also have the presence of security operatives? Well, good afternoon, and I'm uh, pleased to be with you. Uh, that is a very complex scenario, and to the degree that the government forces are able to operate with, one, the, the sufficient, sufficient number of capable forces, uh, how those forces are equipped, and the information that they have that allows them to be able to be out in front and stop attacks are all related. And those things are certainly related to how the conditions exist such that they are able to obtain the information that they need and then have enough sufficiency of force at a particular place at the right time to prevent those things from occurring and then certainly to be able to do things to control the area uh, once uh, those uh, terrorists have been uh, apprehended or removed. So maintaining control is also very important, and being able to maintain a presence that allows that control is critical. So let's talk about um, controlling and maintaining control in the area, like you just stated. Um, this crisis has been on for a really long time. Why is it so difficult to secure um, Kabul Degado? Oh, there are two things. Uh, obviously, uh, the importance of having uh, the capable, uh, responsible, uh, professionals, dedicated security forces, but also the, the way in which the locals who are there that are impacted uh, can also be engaged and involved in helping to control. Uh, you have, when you have populations that are, that are disaffected, especially young, young men who have nothing to do, who roam the streets, who form bands, get associated with various groups because they have very limited alternatives, then the area is fertile, it's rich with those that can become, that can be exploited, that can be taken advantage of to do the things that uh, they would do because there's nothing else to do. And so you have to have a combination of, of these things working in order for the sustained security to exist. So the presence of qualified professional forces uh, that are there ensuring that the people are cared for, but also reducing the conditions that make these people vulnerable to the influences of bad actors, gangs, criminals, terrorists, and so on. Um, from what I gather, you were saying that um, because of young people who really have nothing to do in Mozambique, this has given Al-Shabaab the opportunity to recruit and train. That's clearly a part of it. Uh, and, and, and it goes, it even goes beyond that. It goes beyond that with respect to how the people who are there see themselves in the future and whether or not they have any, any hope, uh, they have the ability to see things at some point in time working for them. All of these things have to be working together in order for there to be a sustained level of stability uh, that then begins to erode the ability of these outside influences, bad actors to have, in the, to have influence over the population, either through fear, uh, through intimidation, uh, through various atrocities, uh, uh, the killings, uh, and recruiting those who are disaffected and vulnerable to their uh, influence.
So the United States, um, Portugal, which is uh, which colonized Mozambique, and uh, as well as South Africa, have all made commitment to send in special forces to train uh, military operatives in Mozambique. But there are fears that this could hinder um, the chan chances of those who are trying to escape, or civilians who are trying to escape. What will foreign boots on ground in Mozambique, uh, what's the implication of foreign boots on, on the ground in Mozambique? Well, I I'm not fully uh, familiar with the purpose, uh, the mission that those uh, will, cut, will have, but clearly anyone who's there ought to be doing what they do so that they are not disrupting and distracting, but they're adding value to what goes on. So those who would come in and do something in support of trying to create a more stable environment have to be very careful to ensure that their actions uh, don't make the situation, uh, ag does not aggravate the situation, but only enhance it and improves it. So good coordination is very important in what's going on so that the actions are adding value to the situation and not doing harm. So good coordination. Uh, with the locals who understand what they're doing so that the actions that are being taken uh, and that training, if it does go on by the Americans, is only one part of the dynamic as well. And so, okay. But they want to ensure that that part that they're doing uh, contributes to an overall security situation, and that happens through effective coordination, which I'm sure will be the case. General Ward, I just want us to get, um, I have just about a minute, a minute left, but I want to look at the bigger pers perspective on this, which is Africa as a whole. There is terrorism here in Nigeria. Of course, we heard about Boko Haram and Iswap. We've also seen Al-Shabaab in um, Somalia and Mozambique as well, like we, like we hear now. Why are we not seeing some sort of coordinated efforts from um, the African Union in terms of fighting um, terrorism in Africa? And what more can be done? Well, cer certainly, <laughs> I guess if I knew the complete answer to that question, I would certainly uh, be giving that to to the countries of the continent so that it could happen in a more effective way. There is a, it's a complex environment. Uh, the security piece of it is very important. The coordination amongst neighbors, the sharing of information amongst neighbors, how neighbors cooperate with each other, uh, having professional forces that can do uh, a effective job in protecting uh, their people is important. Having conditions uh, in the various countries such that the people who are being impacted most severely know that things are being done to, to help them, uh, basic things from delivering services to the water, food, education, basic things that they see what I call a horizon of hope and that the professionalization of security forces, uh, how they cooperate, how information is shared. All of these things and, and shared in a timely way, uh, all of these are important things that must be considered. And as regional organizations, uh, as the continental organizations, as the nations themselves come together and discuss these things, it, they must be done in, in a holistic, complete way and not in separate packages and compartments such that one thing is done, but other things are not being done. They all must be done in a coordinated, synchronized way. And bit by bit, if that's done, they will begin to make a difference because the space that the terrorists take advantage of to operate in will consistently be reduced. Former Commander, U.S. African Command, General William Ward, thanks for talking to us. Thank you.